Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. We're talking about counters. Yeah, we talked about different type of counters. We had the synchronous counters, asynchronous counters, and now we're talking about pre-selection counter. What a pre-selection counter is, I'm going to explain briefly. Well, what is a pre-selection counter? We just want to have a signal if a certain counter value is reached or not yet reached or, or already beyond. All right, this is a pre-selection counter. So actually what we have, we have a counter somewhere. Here's our counter. Counter. Here's the counter input. And we have a counter output. So there are, I don't know how many digits. Yeah? And that's it. And then what we need, we need a comparator. This is a comparator. With three outputs here. What they mean, I will ex explain. So here we have a counter value. Okay, so we have here, I don't know, like I said, how many digits, doesn't really matter. This is our counter value CV. Okay, and this is compared to another value. It's here. This is the pre-selection value. Those two are compared to each other. And actually, what we are getting out of this yeah, is either a signal that CV is smaller than CP, so that we have not yet reached the pre-selected value, or that we have exactly reached the pre-selected value, or that we are already greater than the pre-selected value. Huh? This would be the signals. Huh? Doesn't really matter how they look like. Yeah, if they are short pulse, they are only uh, for dynamic next input. If they might be stay there, if they might stay there, then they are for static inputs as well. So this is actually how a pre-selection counter is working. The only thing we have to figure out now is how to set this pre-selected value. Right? This is, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I think this is logic. So pre-selected value. I'm going to explain now two variants. Yeah? So one variant. This is just this is just one one part, yeah? one, one, one logic element. Yeah? What to do? Yeah? Here is the input of the logic element. Yeah? Here I am using a resistor. This resistor is connected to ground or also zero volt. Yeah? And here I am adding a switch. And I am applying here is the switch S, yeah? and I'm applying here uh, plus, I write 5 volt because 5 volt is a very usual usual thing in in logic, yeah, DTL, transistor transistor logic is working with 5 volt. If it's ha another high level, yeah, 3 to 3 volt for instance is also very common, then replace this in your thoughts with 3 to 3 volt. Doesn't really matter, yeah, high level, low level. Yeah? So, if the switch is open, this resistor will take care that this line is set to zero volt. Okay? Because it's connecting this line to zero volt. Yeah? So this resistor is pulling down this line to zero volt from wherever it was before. It's pulling, it's get pulled down by this resistor. This is why this thing is called pull down. This thing is called pull down. And if the switch is open, we read in logically zero, because then we are pulled down to zero. If the switch is closed, 
we're reading logically one because then we apply 5 volt here and if this resistor is big enough what we can select uh, then this will not really bother back pull down variant second possibility can be the same element here doesn't really matter yeah i'm using a resistor and this resistor is not connected to zero volt but to plus five volt all right so plus five volt high level high level of the logic the used logic and then we have again the switch here and the switch i'm now connecting to zero volt to ground okay here we have the switch this resistor will take care that whenever the switch is open that this line is getting pulled up to 5 volt logically high so this is why this is called pull up uh, pull down pull up and here if the if s is open we're reading logically one because then it's 5 volt and if s is closed we're reading zero yeah. So with a combination, such combinations and a combination of switches, yeah, I can select a pre-selected value. That's it. Yeah. The only thing we have to figure out now is how to do a uh, switch, how to realize this. Yeah. So let's have a look at this. Switches. What possibilities have we? One possibility is, you know, if you're always having the same task, for instance, boxing water bottles. After 24 water bottles, you need to, to use the next tray. Hmm? Then the preselected value is 24 and you, it's not about to change. It will not change, right? So then we could use soldered bridges. Then make simply two contacts and bridge them, solder a piece of, of, I don't know, cable inside, yeah, a bridge, or leave it. Then you have ones and zeros, a combination of ones and zeros, and that's it. However, it's not very convenient to be changed. Yeah? Then you need a soldering iron, you need to, it's not very convenient. Yeah? But if you have a fixed value for sure, no issue. Solder bridges, one possibility. Then, the second possibility would be jumpers. These are small plug cable bridges. How do they look like? I have one here. I have one here. Have a look at this. This is a jumper, all right? So, this is a jumper, and you can even see there is this, this metal bar inside. So, wherever I place it, two things are getting, two pins are getting connected. Here I have one example. It's not really a pre-selection counter, but it is an example. You see, there are the bridges, there are the, the pins, those things here. Yeah, are the pins and I can place such jumper simply above two pins back and suddenly those two pins are connected to each other right? this is how this is working jumpers yeah. plug-able bridges next possibility would be dip switches The small, I would even call it tiny, yeah, small switches. I show you a picture. You need something very sharp or very pointy element to switch those little, tick, 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 those little switches, tick, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down. Yeah, and then you can select a, count, a counter value. Yeah. 
It's already the it's from these three it's the most convenient way. Yeah, I just have to switch the switch, it's not something pull the plug or, or, or solder or something like this. Tip switches. And a very convenient and convenient way would be then a selection wheel. How is this working? A selection wheel has some axis somewhere, right? Then we have this wheel, and this wheel has several positions, and those positions have a number. Here's one position, 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 all right? So, and so on, going around. So this, if this is maybe zero, this is one, this is two, this is three here, so this is then nine, and this is eight, all right? And I can turn, uh, then here would be somewhere a plate. Okay. And then I will simply tuk, 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 select a number. Uh, and how does it help the switches? Well, on the side here we have connectors. Yeah. They are either connected or not. And if zero is not connected, for instance, then there is no piece of, of metal. Yeah. Th those two things, they are touching, they are staying. Yeah. And if we switch to one, then here we have a plate which is connecting those two things. Then we have zero, one. Two would be then a plate which is a little bit further apart and then we have other connectors and so on. And here we can realize then 10, up to 10, or maybe if we have hexadecimal also 16, different combinations. And those things are getting switched simply by choosing the right segment. Okay, choosing the right segment of my of my selection wheel. And then I have the correct combination here of switches open or closed, simply by selecting. This is already a very convenient way, right? Selection wheel. This is all working with switches. However, there are also other possibilities. Yeah, there are other possibilities. What are those other possibilities? Well, one thing is we can use a second counter. With up and down buttons. Place a second counter there, produce up and down buttons, Display the counter value somehow and you can select the pre-selection value simply and then there are two counters and compare the two counter values. Alright? Second counter. Or we could even think about doing some logic, doing some keyboard, yeah, and make direct input. Yeah? A direct number input. Yeah? Keyboard required or right. And additional logic will which, which will produce from the keyboard input the preselected value. This would be also very convenient ways, right? Preselection counter counters. Have you noticed that the, 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 the fastest signal here is always the counter input? The first digit in a binary counter is already only half the frequency. Of the of the counter input, and the second digit is a, is only a quarter, so also half of the of the first digit, and so on. Always half, always half. A counter is also acting as some sort of frequency divider. Okay, so if we need a lower frequency, we can use a counter to reduce the frequency, but only by factor two, right? Sometimes we need other factors. For instance, if we want to count seconds minutes, hours, yeah, then we need other, then we need 60, yeah, or maybe 6 or 3 or 24, yeah, and frequency dividers. Our next topic, next video, yeah, how to achieve different, different uh, frequency ratios with those devices. Next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. 
गुड बाय